Google Analytics is a digital analytics tool. Uh, it's uh, basically can be considered as a web analytics tool, marketing analytics tool, product analytics tool, the way you use it. So depending on how you use it, you can call it different things. But it's a digital analytics tool that allows you to measure what's happening on your website. So a lot of people come on your website, they click on different parts of the website, they scroll through pages, they scroll through uh, content, they look at videos, etc. Some leave, some will stay. And all, all that data that's being collected then shows up in reports like this in Google Analytics. But behind the scene, there are a bunch of number aggregations that happen. You know, how many visitors are coming to your site, how many page views are happening, what's the bounce rate, etc. All these numbers are aggregated from the raw data. So raw data is every time a user makes any interaction with your site, they have, there is a data that gets collected about that user. It's called hits. This is a log file that sits on your web server. If you, those who have access to web server logs can easily see what kind of data is being sent from your web servers. Nowadays, JavaScript collects this data and sends it to different systems such as Google Analytics. But behind the scene, every single interaction, such as the date, the time when that hit was made, the server's IP, the method that was used, the URL that was there, cookies, referrers, etc., everything gets stored. Even if you don't use Google Analytics, you can pull this information from log files on your web server log. Once you do that, you can process that in various systems, not Google Analytics, but you can process it in other systems. Data is everywhere. So not just your web, but data is uh, everywhere. All the channels collect data, whether it's social media, whether it's your Google ads, whether it's TV, offline, everywhere, the data is there. Some data shows up in Google Analytics, other data is in the tools yet some other data is available in third party systems right so such as there might be demographic information about the user which google has it it's a third party system that google analytics can make available not at an individual level but aggregate level but there are third parties that have various data sets such as the weather in a location household information individuals maybe uh, credit score, all that stuff. It's third-party data that you can also use, not directly in GA4 or Google Analytics, but there are ways to use that and bring it in Analytics. Here are some famous quotes about data. Data is the new oil. Uh, data really powers everything we do. With data collection, the sooner the better is always the answer. So all the leaders, recognize the value of data. Many organizations are built on data. Uh, and these, the organizations that are built on data, that's what happens. They are basically data is their currency. They are trying to collect as much as data uh, as possible about the users, about uh, the behavior of the users, about their marketing, et cetera. You if you are in the digital analytics field, it's your job to make sure your organization uses the data and collects the right data. If you are a digital marketer, product marketer, marketer in general, or even in other fields such as finance, uh, merchandising, e-commerce, et cetera, you need to understand how the data is collected, what kind of data is possible to be collected and how you can use it that's when the real value will start to come. So data powers business. However, for organizations to benefit from the data, they need to collect the right data. And that becomes very, very critical in GA4. If you are here, like I wanna learn about GA4 only, we'll get to those GF, that GA4 specific lessons, but this is critical. This is what I teach in my classes all the time about how to think about the data. Learning GA4 is easy. Learning GTM is easy. It's not difficult. Learning how to apply, how to collect the right data is the difficult part. 
And that is where the most money is to be made because the organizations that understand will always hire people who can help make them use of their data and collect the right data. Those who are uh, already in the field and have seen um, these chatter about Google Analytics will move everybody over to from Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 4, forcefully. And you must have heard about this chatter where a lot of people are saying, don't do it, disable that. Disable automatic upgrade from UA to GA4. Why is that? Because that'll lead to incorrect data, not the right data. So that's why it's critical, or not that's why, that's why they are talking about it, because it's critical to collect the right data. Otherwise, it's noise. You have to clean the data, and that's part of the process, making sure we are collecting the right stuff. Then you analyze the data, and then you take action based on that data. Any or For any organization to benefit from the data, that's what they have to do, not just report. So it this becomes critical. As you move from Universal Analytics to Google Analytics, keep these things in mind. Do we need this data? When we get clients, the first thing I ask is, are you using that? Answer is, we don't know. Then, okay, let's find out. If the answer is yes, okay, that stays. If the answer is no, it goes away. If the answer is yes, if they're using it, then are they? what format are they using it? What's missing? What do they need to track, et cetera? So that's a discussion that we have back and forth, a long discussion before we start to implement. You can implement and then figure out too. That's another approach. But then you'll have days when the data is not right. But if you get the right data in place, then your stakeholders will uh, benefit from it and you will have a solid value in the organization. So digital analytics is the measurement, that's the definition of digital analytics, uh, which is the measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of website and digital channel data for the purpose of understanding and optimizing web and digital channels. Those who have seen me present live, I always talk about this definition because a lot of folks are only uh, focusing on just data collection and measurement. Let's put the tags, let's do the report. Let's put the tag, let's do the report. Some will be reporting just those basic numbers. They don't even go to in-depth reporting. When I say in-depth reporting, which does not mean presenting all sorts of metrics, but presenting the right metrics catered towards the right stakeholder. And very few do any deeper analysis. They might look at short-term ad performance, and that's the extent of analysis they do. But every single user interaction, every single touch point of a user presents an opportunity for you to optimize it, to understand. And that's what deeper analysis allows you to do. GA4 is very well positioned for deeper analysis. And I'll talk about that why. Digital analytics ecosystem, contain, uh, which contains various tools. And I'm talking about Google ecosystem here only. So you saw the definition, measurement, collection, right? For measurement, it's universal analytics and GA4. Now it will be GA4. Data collection starts in GTM. You can do in GA4, but I highly recommend you use Google Tag Manager to collect the right data. Then you have analysis, which can, hap which can happen in GA4, Google Data Studio, BigQuery. Those who have been following me and uh, you will know that I am a big fan of BigQuery. And the reason is the deeper analysis that you can conduct. I have done several sessions on how you can use BigQuery to enhance your analysis, your efforts, your marketing, et cetera. And I'm seeing some questions here. I saw one question here. I'll answer that question at the very end. We'll come back to anything that we need to. And then you have reporting which happens in GA4 and Data Studio, now called Looker Studio, and understanding. So measurement, collection, and analysis, uh, analysis report for end reporting for the purpose of understanding. So we are at understanding. What does this data mean? 
deeper understanding comes when you take the data out of GA4. You can do within GA4 as well, but Data Studio and BigQuery will really help. And then optimizing. Right now, I put Google Optimize as in Google ecosystem, but that tool is going away. Okay. Okay, I'll see that comment here. So let's talk about how does Google Analytics work. To track a website, you put a small piece of JavaScript code on each page of your site. It could be directly a GA4 code, or it could be Google Tag Manager code. The GA4 code looks something like this. So where you have the measurement ID, and you can you just put it in the head section of every page. Every page is critical. If your page, if your website is built in single page application, then make sure to put it in when the page refreshes or the content refreshes. That requires a bit uh, different approach, but in general, every single page view should be tracked. Otherwise, you'll have wrong numbers and also your, uh, your all the reporting will be broken. So this is how it works. A user comes to your site, a Google Analytics uh, JavaScript collects the information about that users, drop a cookie if the cookie doesn't exist for the first time when the user comes, a cookie is dropped, and then that data is sent via JavaScript to Google Analytics database. This is where all the processing happens, then it shows up in your reports. That's how the basic system works. There is a lot more to it, but in general, this is what's happening. Google Analytics database then processes, aggregates the data, puts them in separate tables, and then show them in reports. Those who are using Google, have started using Google Analytics 4, uh, just a word, side note here. I'll cover that in my future lessons again as well. But side note, the data that you see in your predefined reports or explore comes from a different, uh, or uh, yeah, your predefined reports, they come from a different database system than your explore does, and then um, what BigQuery shows. So there are three different data sources that you can potentially run into when you're looking at those reports, which could re re result in different numbers in different parts of the G parts of GA4. So keep that in mind. All right. Now we're going to go into Google Analytics versus Universal Analytics interface. Anybody here does not have any experience with Universal Analytics? Let me know. So as you move from Universal Analytics to Google Analytics, you'll notice the familiar interface is going away. You were used to a one interface, that's going away. There are no more views. There are several canned reports, but uh, several of them are gone. You know, the number of reports in GA4 is uh, less compared to what you had in Universal Analytics. Old tracking is going away and old data is going away. So all data that exists in currently in Universal Analytics will be completely gone uh, by end of this year. Uh, if those who are interested in keeping that old data, first think about why you need to keep that old data and what do you need from that data. Once you identify that, you might figure out, hey, there are only a few numbers that we need. You can store them in Google Sheets or even in BigQuery, however you want. I doubt anybody, maybe there are cases, will need older data in detail. Possible, it's possible if you have been using it for deeper analysis, it's possible. If that's the case, then there are third-party connectors that'll allow you to move the data, you can use the APIs. But your data will be gone by end of this year. That's what GA is saying. So what's new? In GA4, you have a simpler data model. I am, I've, I've been a big fan of GA from day one. Not where the product interface and everything is, but the direction of the product. I like the direction of the product because the data model is much simpler, much easier to grasp than the previous one. And it also normalizes 
the tracking across different systems, not just web, but not on mobile, but offline as well. This data model allows you to extend it across different channels. Event parameters are provided for deeper insights. So in GA4, in UA, you could only have three parameters for an event, four. Category, action, label, and value. However, in GA4, you have much many more event parameters that allow you to get deeper insights. You also get user properties to enrich your user data. You get cross device data in one single view, as I was saying, you know, you can measure them across channels, across devices. You have a built-in debugging tool, easier to comply with users and local laws to delete data. This is a big one. This I think will be extended more uh, in its functionality. Every single country, has its own laws. Every even different states, regional well, regions have different laws. So it's becoming very difficult for uh, companies to comply with those data, uh, you know, regulation and data deletion requests. GA4 is putting those controls in. It's not where it should be, but it's better than nothing. You have machine learning to counter cookie deletion and missing data. This is becoming a problem. Cookie deletion is on the rise. Browsers are blocking the cookies, which results in missing data. However, there is machine learning that fills those gaps to give you accurate numbers. So this is uh, another big change that I like. And you can sto histo store historical data forever using BigQuery integration. Now you can get the raw data in BigQuery with GA4. So GA4 is a great step forward. However, the way GA team has been rolling out features, has been rolling out or taking away things is kind of absurd, uh, which I don't like. BigQuery allows for data enrichment using first party and third party data. You might have watched my trainings earlier about this, uh, but I talk about this a lot and something that I cover in my courses uh, both paid courses as well as free training sessions that I do. And you get better at insights. So what's a data model in GA4? You have users who come to your site, and then you have events, the actions user take. Very, very easy stuff to grasp. Users is a, per is a person who interacts with your website or app or any other channel or platform. This person is described by user properties. So you, a user is described by user properties. Many users properties are automatically collected and tracked by Google Analytics. And in addition to those, you can collect 25 additional user property. For example, you can know, hey, this is a student versus a professional, whether it's a subscriber, free, paid, et cetera. So you can get a lot of information about the user by properly defining what properties do we want to track that's relevant to our business. So this is where the thinking first comes into play. You can obviously, you know, as you go, you can make those modifications. But the upfront thinking, the reason upfront thinking is because one, it aligns the stakeholders. So if you are providing your reports and analysis to marketers, then you can bring them together understand their needs and put a proper tracking in place rather than forcing something and saying, hey, here is the report, we can modify it later. A person loses interest if they're not involved in the process. That helps with the organization. Uh, the pe that also helps with people uh, thinking process on how they can use the product. So keep that in mind. That's why you need to do upfront planning. So users, when they come to your site or app or whatever, they do interact with them, uh, your site. Every single interaction is an event. When you load a page, that's an event. Scroll, that's an event. Just staying on the web page and reading it is also an event. Every 10 seconds, an event is tracked uh, for that user. You click on a button, you download a white paper, everything is an event. Users have properties. 
So you get user properties such as age, gender, interest, as, as I talked about. And here are the user properties that are collected automatically. So age, the app store, the country, etc. cetera. Bunch of these are collected. You might not use all of those, those, but maybe age is something that you might wanna use. Device category is used extensively, etc. And then similar to users, events have parameters, right? I mentioned that. They provide further context. So you got users, you got events. That's it. That's all you have to think about. How do I define this user? How do I just define this event? That's pretty much the data model. Every user property uh, that you collect, every event parameter that you collect can be then used in your reports as a dimension, as a metric. Those who are not familiar with dimension and metrics, dimensions are the way to classify your data. Metrics is actual data. So country is a dimension, number of users or sessions is a metric. All your reports are a collection of dimensions and metrics. You put dimensions and you put metrics. If you look at GA reports, dimensions are vertically down and metrics are all horizontally across. That's the metrics. I mean, that's how the data is shown. So events are user interaction with the website or app. We talked about this. There are 25 event parameters. Many common events are automatically collected to save implementation time. And I believe this list is going to go higher and higher over time. More and more things are going to be automatically tracked. I've said this before, I'll say this again. If your entire focus is on technical implementation, like let's track this button. Those who are tracking buttons, videos, downloads, et cetera, in universal analytics, you know that's automatically tracked now in GA4. That part of your business is gone. Form tracking is also now part of GA4. Eventually, a lot of things are going to be automatically tracked with GA4. So you have to get deeper into the implementation if you are going to stay there. Think about not just technical implementation, but how can you take it further, whether it's learning JavaScript, whether it's learning data integration, uh, if you want to stay in the technical side, and also collecting user requirements, spending time there. Technical folks, there is another session I do where technical folks have a different career path. If those who are interested, let me know. I'll give you access to that uh, three-day session that I did on career paths in digital analytics. But technical implementation days are numbered. Uh, events have parameters. You get name value pair. So name of a parameter and the value that you're going to pass. Some parameters are automatically captured. Others you define. Automatically captured events, location, uh, language, page location, page referral, page title, screen resolution are collected for events. You don't have to do anything there. There are automatic collection. And those who are new to GA4, if none of if these things don't make sense yet, don't worry about it. I'm trying to make a training that's applicable across because people from different backgrounds are here. They have different experience level. So I'm trying to create something for everybody. If things are not clear, send me questions and I'll make sure to specifically answer those questions in my other trainings. You also have a chance to ask those right now. Automatic, enhanced measurement, recommended, and custom. Automatics are the ones we just looked at. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, the page location, the, these are the automatic properties but events based on user interactions, such as session start, is automatically collected. And these properties or parameters are also collected with those events. Enhanced are page views, scroll, when somebody scrolls 90% vertically, any outbound links, so when the views, the site search happens, video engagement, file download, and there is now form tracking as well. I haven't started using form tracking because it's not where it should be. It has lots of issues. But um, once I start, then I'll talk about those as well. But those are called enhanced events and they are automatically enabled. 
you can disable them in GA4 if you would like. Then you have recommended events. These are events that are bucketed into certain verticals. So let's say, for example, in retail e-commerce, there is an event called generate lead. You can use that event for any vertical, for travel, for game, education, or anything else. Um, you don't have to strict stick to what GA is saying. So, but these are recommended in those verticals. Whenever possible, try to use the recommended event names um, because Google Analytics is possibly going to unlock several reports and features. In future, those are dependent on those event names. So keep that in mind. And then if nothing works, then you create your own events. That's in a nutshell, the data model. I'll cover more details throughout these trainings as I conduct them in future. Now I'm gonna to go to GA4, uh, but before that, I'm gonna look at the questions, answer those, so then I'll go into the GA4 interface. So if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, so Francisco is asking for GA, what's the best tagging strategy would you recommend? The best tagging strategy starts with business questions. What are we trying to track? That's number one, who are we serving? You look at the organization, who's using your reports? Is it marketing, merchandising? Is it ads team, email team, social media team? Are they part of which part of the part of the team they are? Look at those, your stakeholders, who's currently using or will be using. Talk to them. They'll tell you. There is a process I go through in my Become a Digital Analyst program where students go through this uh, training. They are a digital analyst. They ask all these questions. They come up with a measurement strategy. They define what, uh, you know, how to take that requirements and convert them into technical specs. And then how do you take those technical specs and implement? So we go through that process. Um, there is no one strategy that I'll say fix, works, but it's really, what is the purpose? Purpose of digital analytics is to help business stakeholders make decisions. So ask them what makes sense for them. What would they like to see or measure? Not metrics. I don't ever ask like what metrics you would like. I mean, some cases we do, but it's generally is what are you trying to achieve? What would you like to know about your users or site or app that'll help you do your work better? You are supporting them. Keep that in mind. It's not like one way push. You need to make sure they are using it. So that's the strategy I'll take. What are the main differences with tools like Mixpanel or Amplitude? They are very specific tools. I haven't paid attention too much to these tools because our, most of our work is in Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, PVIC Pro, et cetera. Very web, digital, mobile, uh, I mean, web centric. Amplitude product analytics tool that is trying to fit and compete with Google Analytics. That's kind of Google Analytics is trying to go into and uh, dealing with the uh, competing with a tool like Amplitude. All these tools are going to actually they have an overlap on what they do. They track user behavior. They track how users interact with the sites. I'm going to actually be creating more content around these tools and other tools as well. Pivik Pro is another tool that I have just launched an academy with them. So it's a Previc Pro official academy that's done by me. So if you are interested, let me know. It's a free tool for you to use. Those who are Universal Analytics fans and have used that, you'll love that tool because it's very similar. And those who are trying to become freelancers or are freelancers, that might be another skill to add to your re resume. And the tool is free. The training is free. But if you want to go deeper into digital analytics, then come join me and, uh, you know, find success there. All right. Uh, now, how to track offline conversions in GA4? Great question. The data model. Think about the data model. What is What does it look like? It's basically you have events and you have users. Think about a checkout stand over in a store. A user comes to you, that's a user, might have credit card information, might have a loyalty card ID or whatever, and that user makes a purchase. 
And if you just store tracks information, such as where the user is going, which aisle the user was in, do you see the similarity? Which aisle the user was in? Which page was the user on? What products are they checking out? What products the user took out? If you can track all that information, there are beacons that allow you to track that information. Once you have that data, you can see how you can send it via you know, APIs, via payload calls to Google Analytics, and it'll come in Google Analytics. I'm not gonna go into the details, but if you're interested, take, take a look at that. It's just what event can we track and then push it to Google Analytics. You can even push it directly to BigQuery bypassing Google Analytics and get all the data there. All right, any other question? So if not, I'm going to extend this session, today's session. Generally, I'm gonna keep it at 30 minutes so we can do these 30 minute sessions uh, week over week. Now, the critical thing for me is to get your questions. If I don't get questions, then I have my own agenda. If I get questions, then you shape the agenda. This is free training for you. You don't have to pay for it, but you, you have to ask questions. All right, let's go to Google Analytics now. So I'm gonna stop this share and do another share. And this time it's going to be Google Analytics. Oh, where did my Chrome window go? Oh, right here. Actually, <laughs> open right here. Okay, so share. Come on, this is difficult when you have. Share. Okay, here. Francisco, do you have a sandbox for training on your courses? It's actually better than just a sandbox. What I have is a real business. My students practice on real businesses. This is something they put on their resumes. One of my students, I don't know if she's online or not, but she, her five-year goal, to become a manager in an analytics uh, in marketing team uh, for a company, uh, you know, analyst role or ma manager role. Her first job after she had no background in analytics, came in, attended the course, I think last, I don't know, May. So, and then she started her job in January or February, February. That's all it took. From And she is now dealing with GA4 implementation. She's dealing with data analysis, finding issues, everything. And the first job was analytics manager because everything that she did, she fully immersed herself into it. She got the experience, put it on resume and uh, got the tips and tricks and everything that needed to say in the interview and got the job. So it's better than just having a sandbox where you get just a little bit of traffic. It's like full working site that you can work with. And also you get guidance all along. Not from me. We have people who have been in the industry for longer than I have and part of my membership. So you learn from them as well as you learn from newbies, people who are trying to break and people who have just started the career, et cetera. So lots of learning, different kind of people bring their experiences. Hey, I was tracking this. This is what I found. And this is how I, how I solved the problem. Okay, uh, how to avoid quota limits with GA4 dashboarding in Looker Studio? Uh, quota limits, uh, you'll have to pay for it. The other way is to optimize. We'll talk about quota limits in future, not part of this, because this is a, a topic for the future classes. Thank you for your free training. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, GA is not aligned custom parameters under item array, which is big drop off. Okay. Chandra, you are far ahead of everybody else that I'm trying to train here in this session. Uh, we'll talk about that in future as well. There are drawbacks in GA4 and everybody knows that, uh, but there are ways to get around those. I've done it for clients. 
So think outside the box is what I would say. There are ways to handle those situations. You just don't have to be locked into what GA does or allows or the parameters allow you to do it. Side topic, we can discuss that. If you become part of the academy's academy, we can discuss those. All right, here's GA4 interface, those who haven't looked at it. The reports uh, are all underneath here. And we're not gonna go into the details, but all the reports that you'll find are underneath this section. Come on. So you can you can see all your acquisition, engagement, monetization is the reports that you'll see. Demographic and tech, if you enable certain things, you'll also be able to see data there. But some data is already collected by default. Those who are looking in GA4, this is the section that you'll end up spending a lot of time. So you should pay attention to this and become familiar with it. GA4 is, and it might change, when it launched, the mindset there wasn't reporting. The mindset was analysis. And that's actually truly the use of a tool, analysis for optimization, not reporting. Reporting is required, but that's what you need to be doing is if you really want to solidify your position in an organization, anybody can do reporting, right? My 13-year-old kid, if I show him, hey, here's how a 14-year-old kid, if I show him like how to do reports, he can drag and drop and create reports. That's not rocket science. Now, analyzing the data to find values, what's happening, what's missing, how can we move forward, that's analysis. And that's exactly what you can do in exploration. So that's going to be key here. And then there are a bunch of configuration which we'll go through. But go ahead and those who haven't started, you can go and look at Google Merchandise Store, which is free data that's available to everybody. This is on running. This is Google Analytics running on Google Merchandising Store. If you want the link, drop a comment and I'll give you the link to get this report. Become familiar with it. I'm gonna go through these reports in details as well as configuration, et cetera, in the future session. That will be next one, is going to be next week. So stay tuned, depending on when I have meetings, either it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday. So stay, stay tuned for those. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I schedule that. All right. That's all I had for this today. Intro to the data model, just overview of Google Analytics 4. We'll go into details in future classes. All right. Uh, GA is not aligned custom parameters under, okay, I can answer that question. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay, Chandra, and you have asked some good question. Go ahead and send those questions to me. They will be answered in future training sessions, but they might not be answered like next session. It'll take time for me to get step-by-step step to that place where I can answer these questions. So go ahead and send me those questions so that I can make sure to answer them. All right. That's all for now. Those who want to learn GA4 faster than these trainings are going to provide you, then you can obviously join Optizen Academy and uh, join my, you know, the group that we have. Uh, those who are freelancers, I highly recommend. Those who are alone in your organization and doing analytics, I highly recommend that you join uh, Optizen Academy because the, your learning will accelerate. You will learn from people at different stages in their career. You'll hear you have problems, you get your problems get solved like this. Yesterday I was working with a student. She could have easily spent week, two weeks solving something which we solved in a day. And right, she made changes and now she's looking at it. So that's the benefit you get. All right, guys, that's all I have. We went over. I'm going to try to keep these meetings really within 30 minutes, not more than that. But today I felt like I need to give that overview so that everybody's on the same page and as we dive into these reports. No more questions? Thank you, guys. Bye. If you have any questions,